Hello and welcome to a new video about alternating current. Today we are really talking about current because last two videos were about math, right? We talked about mathematics, we talked about complex numbers, what is a complex numbers, how to calculate it and so on. Um, what has this to do with alternating current? This is now the thing we want to discuss today. So what is the reason why we have talked about complex numbers in context of alternating current? Because actually the alternating current, I am now using a voltage as idea. Yeah, the, 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 the formula was this u from t yeah, equals some amplitude, some maximum value multiplied by sine of omega t plus phi u. This was, this was alternating current, right? Sine wave yeah, with certain frequency and a certain starting point. Now let's have a look what is our complex number. Our complex number z can, re, can represent it by z cosinus phi plus j z sine phi. This z was the uh, uh, absolute value and this phi was the angle. And now look at that. Something multiplied by sinus. Something multiplied by sinus. So if phi is maybe this, I can use this. I only have to look at the imaginary part. So actually, this here is the same like the imaginary part of amplitude multiplied by e j and now phi yeah phi is in our case omega t plus phi u and this I can further divide yeah, because I can write imaginary part of u dach e j omega t multiplied a j phi u. Right. Right. Okay. So this is actually only the image. I'm just looking at the imaginary part of this stuff. And we had this. Huh? Look at that. We have said we are looking only at the imaginary stuff of this Okay, there is the square root of two. Yet, uh -huh. Okay, maybe I should, I should do it here as well. So with our with our maximum value equals square root of two multiplied by the root mean square by the effective value. Yeah, then we I can note this again. Yeah, because this is also only valid for sinusoidal quantities. Yeah, this is the effective value, the root mean square. So actually we have here written u from t equals imaginary part of square root of 2 multiplied by u. This is this here. Yeah? And now I change this. Multiplied by a j phi u multiplied by a j omega t. Hmm? Look at that here. This part compared with here. Yeah. This is our our complex number. Okay, we have a we have a length, yeah, u. We have a angle phi u. Is exactly this. Yeah. This is a complex number which is u multiplied a g phi u. There is no time anymore. There is nothing. Yeah? The time comes with this j omega t. Yeah? Then this is a momentary position of our voltage yeah? and we only look at the imaginary part and then we get a sine wave. There is the connex. All right? There is the connex. We only look at a at, at what to do with this? Yeah, because it's a sine wave and it's changing over time. What to do 
with this. This is this here is called effective value pointer. Or also sometimes RMS pointer. Root mean square pointer. But this stuff here, does is, is this really necessary or what is this what is this? Yeah? Uh, because this rotating with omega we manage with this, yeah? And whew, the length whew, looks good. Looks good, I must say. Yeah? Let's have a look. How is this applied? Yeah. Let's have in 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 example uh, Ohm's law because simply it's important. Our Ohm's law was u the voltage equals the resistance multiplied by the current, and this is of course true for every moment in time. Yeah? And now I say, okay, I, I'm using this stuff here. I say here, it, this is the imaginary part of square root of two and my effective value pointer, yeah? a j omega t equals r multiplied by imaginary part square root of 2 i e j omega t just used here okay now let's think about it if this is true for the imaginary part yeah what is happening with the real part you have a relation of the in the imaginary part so in the real part there must be the same relation yeah? And if in the real part and in the imaginary part is the same relation, then this is true for the whole complex number. Yeah? So actually, I can just skip the imaginary part. I just can write square root of 2 u e j omega t equals r multiplied square root of 2 i e j omega t. And now look what is happening. Gone, 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 gone. We have here written u equals r multiplied i. The, it's the same formula. The only difference is that these are here complex numbers. So I don't care about this j omega t. I don't care that those pointers are rotating. I don't care that they are... Uh, I only watch the imaginary part to see the sine wave. Yeah? I can use my rules on a snapshot to a certain point in time, because actually this, this is just drawn at a point in time. Usually it's zero, yeah, and you can select zero value. It doesn't really affect usually. Yeah, when is zero? Yeah. And important is that you draw this, those those pointers at the same point in time. You cannot point. You cannot draw the 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 voltage pointer at one point in time and the current pointer at another point in time. No, that's not. It's like a snapshot. Okay, snapshot, and. So we just using those snapshots, apply our laws to those snapshots and we are done. And in the background, we know, okay, we are just looking at the imaginary part and, and this is then given our sine wave and so on. But just, we just have to calculate with u and i as complex numbers and everything turns out just fine. This is why we are using complex numbers. Right now, this Ohm's law doesn't really matter because here u and i are pointing in the same direction because r is simply a real number, so it has angle zero. And whatever angle phi i this has, 
for you is the same because for i plus zero is always also for i for you and for i is the same but there are other cases where this will be different yeah? we will talk about that yeah? we will talk about that uh, in next video when we're doing the calculation of of ac uh, circuits uh, then we talk about kirchhoff we talk about what is uh, uh, now Ohm's law, okay, we covered uh, resistance, but what is this uh, capacitor? What's with the coil? Stuff like that. Next video. Yeah. So now we have the context, uh, connects between uh, complex numbers and sinus formed AC, sinusoidal quantities. That's the that's the trick there. All right, helps us. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.